Wrestling fans watching in the 1980s will never forget the powerful impression that Macho Man Randy Savage left on them. Randy's energy and overflowing charisma complemented his incredible in-ring skills. He captivated viewers in classic matches against the likes of Hulk Hogan, Jake Roberts and Ric Flair. However, Randy Savage is often remembered as half of a duo. There was one woman who stood by his side during those golden years. His ring manager and real-life wife, Miss Elizabeth. Randy, together with his brother Lanny, were trying to keep their father's wrestling promotion afloat in the late 1970s when he first met Elizabeth Hewlett. Elizabeth was working on the reception desk of a gym in Lexington, Kentucky when Randy walked through the door. He noticed her immediately and it wasn't long before they hit up a relationship. Soon after meeting Randy, Liz quit her job at the gym and was working in International Championship Wrestling. At the end of 1984, ICW closed down, but the relationship between Randy and Liz was still blossoming. Randy and Liz got married in December 1984, and soon after the wedding, Randy caught the eye of Vince McMahon and the WWF. Randy's debut for the Federation came on a July 6th episode of Championship Wrestling, where he beat a local jobber. On TV, Randy was presented as the hottest free agent in wrestling, and so numerous famous managers, including Bobby Heenan, Jimmy Hart, Mr. Fuji, Johnny Valiant, and Freddie Blassie, all competed with each other to become his manager. However, Randy turned them all down and in a surprising twist, he picked newcomer Miss Elizabeth as his new manager instead. The gamble of Savage picking this unknown lady over all of these established managers sowed the seeds of Randy being an unpredictable wild man in the world of the WWF. In the early days, Randy's character was that of an unhinged heel. He was cruel and domineering towards Liz. That was one of his trademarks and the crowd hated him for it. One of the most memorable instances of Randy's on-screen jealousy was in a feud with George the Animal Steel. Steel was presented as a simple-minded man-child with a habit of chewing the turnbuckles. In reality, Steele was a wrestling veteran with over 30 years of experience in the ring. In the storyline, Steele developed an innocent crush on Liz which struck a chord with the fans watching at ringside and at home and it was like a modern take on the tale of Beauty and the Beast. The audience was captivated by this storyline and they cheered on Steele with the hopes of him winning the heart of Miss Elizabeth. Randy played his part of the villain determined to keep them apart absolutely perfectly. The fans weren't aware of Liz and Randy's real-life relationship with each other either, this being years before the internet. As far as they were concerned, Randy was just the killjoy stopping the fairy tale from taking place. But in reality, Randy didn't really have to do much acting in this angle. In fact, he genuinely hated the entire story, and it was an early sign of the rampant possessive streak in his personality. Randy also felt that Steele was about a decade past his prime and that he should be wrestling the top tier stars rather than taking part in such a lightweight storyline. The feud ended at WrestleMania 2 where Macho Man faced off against Steele. Randy successfully defended his Intercontinental Championship in a match that barely lasted five minutes. However, this was only the start of Randy's jealousy problem both on and off screen. Behind the scenes, Elizabeth wasn't too far from her on-screen persona. She was shy, she was quiet, and she was effortlessly graceful. Her relationship with Randy had been going strong for years before they joined the WWF, but the testosterone-charged atmosphere of the locker room was starting to trigger Randy's paranoia. In an interview many years later, The Ultimate Warrior said, the backstage environment is like a zoo. Hallways are set up as dressing rooms. You can see guys half undressed, totally undressed, going to the shower in a towel or still in their underwear or their trunks. I've never met a group of males with a greater tendency towards adultery, promiscuity and even sexual perversion. Randy was just protective of the wife he loved. Bret Hart chimed in his thoughts. 
I remember envying Randy for being able to bring his wife on the road all the time, but in hindsight, it seems to me anyway that never being out of each other's sight probably contributed to the demise of their fairy tale romance more than anything else. Randy always catches a lot of heat for his overbearing treatment of Liz, but Sensational Sherry reckoned that it was more of a two-way street than is often reported. She said, Let me just say this, both of them were Scorpios and they were both overprotective of each other and very jealous, but I knew that they loved each other very much too. And sometimes when you love someone so much, you don't realise what you're doing, even if you think it's in their best interest. Randy's next major feud was with Ricky Steamboat. It was in October 1986 when Randy brutally crushed Steamboat's throat, which maintained his reputation of a fearsome bad guy. Randy and Steamboat went head-to-head -head at WrestleMania 3 in the Pontiac Silverdome, and the match was an absolute roller coaster. After an astounding 19 near falls, Steamboat managed to pin Randy to win the Intercontinental Championship. Watching the match now, it still stands up as one of the greatest WrestleMania matches in history, but when you delve a little bit deeper into the match itself and how it was set up, it's surprising to hear that Randy insisted on every single move of the match being choreographed beforehand. The controlling streak in his personality was beginning to extend to his professional life too. Nonetheless, the match was a huge success and the fans started to appreciate Randy for his in-ring skills. The tide with the fans really started to turn. The WWF noticed this shift from the fans and decided to transform the once-hated heel into one of the company's most beloved babyfaces. And Liz was instrumental in Randy becoming a good guy. In the storyline, the Honky Tonk Man proclaimed himself as the greatest intercontinental champion of all time, which Randy took issue with. Randy competed for the Intercontinental Championship, but was robbed of the title due to interference from the Hart Foundation, who were allies with the Honky Tonk Man at the time. After being brutally shoved to the ground, Miss Elizabeth sprinted backstage to try and get help for Randy, and when she came back out, Hulk Hogan was right there next to her and he was ready to save the day. This moment marked the beginning of the Mega Powers tag team between Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. The Mega Powers team of Hogan, Randy and Elizabeth were, in the words of the Hulkster, the most powerful force in WWF history. A few months down the line, the WWF decided to incorporate Randy's overprotective nature into the storyline. On screen, Randy started to become suspicious of Hogan's behaviour towards Liz, and cracks began to form in the tag team when Randy noticed Hogan being a bit too friendly with Elizabeth. Hogan even started to insist that Liz appeared at ringside for some of his matches. Then in February 1989, the tension erupted. Elizabeth became injured during a match. Hogan was so concerned with her well-being, he carried her off for medical attention, leaving Randy to fight alone. When Liz regained consciousness, she urged Hogan to go back to the ring. When Hogan got back to the ring, Randy was furious about being abandoned earlier. After the match, Hogan found Randy in the medical area backstage shouting at Elizabeth and accusing Hogan of stealing his spotlight and his woman. Despite Hogan's attempts to calm Randy down, he lashed out, hitting Hogan with the championship belt and ending their partnership once and for all. Famously, the Mega Powers exploded at WrestleMania 5 in 1989 and Elizabeth was right at the epicentre of this feud. The story involved the Macho Man descending into Macho Madness, or in other words, he became a paranoid freak. He played the role perhaps just a little bit too well. On the night of WrestleMania, Hogan and Randy squared off for the WWF Championship. With Miss Elizabeth in a neutral corner, she tried to help both men at different points during the match, which led to her being sent backstage by the referee. Hogan overcame Randy's diving elbow drop. He hulked up and executed a leg drop to win the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. After the match, Randy dumped Elizabeth and sided with Sensational Sherry as he turned heel. 
It was a genius piece of booking as Sherry was like the dark to Elizabeth's light and the fans didn't like it one bit when Randy decided to side with her. Of course, like all of the best stories in wrestling, there was more than a dash of truth to the on-screen implosion of the mega powers. According to Hogan, he felt the direct wrath of Randy's paranoid, jealous mind one night in Paris. Elizabeth was my manager and we went to the ring in Paris. There were no steps. Elizabeth was probably 95 or 100 pounds soaking wet. So I reached over the top rope, reached all the way over where she's standing next to me and grabbed her by the armpits. I picked her all the way up. She had a dress on and put her in the ring. Randy said, you son of a bitch, you grabbed her boobs. We walk up and he grabs a headlock on me, but he puts that side headlock on me. I'm hanging in, I'm hanging in there and I didn't want my eyeballs to pop out, so I grabbed his waist and I squeezed. Randy, if you don't let go, I'm going to dump you on your head. He was so pissed at me. The match sucked. We had a horrible match. Savage's behaviour didn't go unnoticed by the other performers around at the time. Dutch Mantel said, I think some of that stuff you saw on TV, where he accused Hogan of having eyes for Elizabeth, had a little bit of truth to it in Randy's head. I don't think Hogan ever looked at her like he would like to take her away from Randy or do something with her away from Randy, but Randy was very, very protective of that woman. These perceived issues over Elizabeth would be just the start of Randy's problems with Hogan. The WWF kept Liz and Randy apart for a couple of years, despite the fans being desperate to see them get back together. At WrestleMania 7, it was Randy versus The Ultimate Warrior in a retirement match. During the match, Liz was spotted in the crowd, and as the match went on, they kept on cutting back to her, and she started looking more and more concerned. Eventually, Warrior beat Randy and forced him to retire. After the match, Queen Sherry turned on Randy viciously. Liz couldn't take it anymore, and so she jumped into the ring and she attacked Sherry. Randy was shocked, but so happy to see Liz, and in a genuinely beautiful moment, they reunited. At SummerSlam 1991, a marriage took place in the middle of the ring. Of course, Randy and Liz had actually been married to each other since December 1984, but it was still a nice on-screen moment. But in reality, the wheels were starting to come off Elizabeth and Randy's relationship. Randy's overprotective behaviour started to become almost unbearable for Liz. Jerry Lawler alleged that Randy had even gone as far as locking Liz in a closet backstage so nobody else could talk to her while he was away in the ring. In 1992, Elizabeth finally had enough and she decided to separate from Randy. In 1993, Hogan took a trip away to Miami to shoot a movie and he invited his family to come with him and he also invited Elizabeth to come along for the ride too. While she was away, Elizabeth cut all contact with Randy for four days before telling him to find a lawyer because she wanted a divorce. Out of desperation, Randy travelled to Miami himself where he confronted Hogan demanding to know where Elizabeth was. Allegedly, their confrontation escalated, which attracted the attention of the police. The black eye that Hogan can be seen sporting during WrestleMania 9 is believed to be from Randy after this scuffle. In an interview, Hogan said, Randy claimed that I was the instigator, that I was responsible for his divorce. He laid all the blame on me. I was merely trying to be friendly by inviting Elizabeth. I had no idea she would turn her back on him. After that incident, he just lost it. There was no going back. Both Randy and Hogan worked for WCW in the 90s, where their love-hate relationship was referenced in different storylines. Liz didn't appear back on TV until 1996, when she also signed with WCW. Randy and Liz managed to maintain a working relationship with each other as they both participated in storylines together on screen, but they never rekindled their romance. By 1999, Randy seemed to have totally moved on from Liz. He was coming to the ring with his new real-life girlfriend, Gorgeous George, and he seemed to be able to have a fairly happy working relationship with Liz in WCW. Liz herself managed to move on too, and she started dating Lex Luger. Liz moved in to Luger's Atlanta house. However, Luger 
had already developed a massive substance abuse issue and he was regularly abusing opiates, painkillers and alcohol. It wasn't long before Liz was sharing this substance abuse lifestyle with Luger and she too managed to develop a massive drug problem. Night after night they drank bottles of vodka and necked dozens of pills until they blacked out. One night, things went too far. While Luger was in the kitchen, Elizabeth became unresponsive to him. Initially, he thought that she'd fallen asleep and he repeatedly tried to wake her up. But as her eyes rolled into the back of her head, Luger realised that her eyes had become hugely dilated. In a frantic state, Luger dialed 911 and attempted to resuscitate Elizabeth until the paramedics arrived to take over. It was to no avail and Elizabeth died on May the 1st, 2003 at the age of just 42. After his relationship with Elizabeth, Randy really did seem to get his head together and he apparently had learned from his mistakes. He remarried in 2010, this time to an old sweetheart he'd dated before he met Elizabeth in the 80s. But Randy's life would be tragically cut short too. On the morning of May the 20th, 2011, Randy suffered from a sudden heart attack while he was driving. He was aged just 58. The relationship between Elizabeth and Randy dissolved under the intense pressure of the wrestling industry and it's just another reminder of how the business has a tendency to ruin lives if left unchecked.